All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Tom Black. I'm the Vice President General Manager of the Campus Switching Business here at Aruba. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to visit us today and welcome to NFDX. Uh, we've got hopefully a, a good agenda planned for you today. Um, we'll start with uh, an introduction kind of on the, the, the product and how it fits in the portfolio and the strategy. And we've actually brought um, many members of my team over here to the, uh, the left side of the audience, uh, including several of my lead engineers. Um, You'll, I'd ask my whole team to introduce yourself when you come up, and uh, it's up to you whether you want to be gentle on the engineers. You can play stump the engineer if you want, um, but uh, obviously uh, those of us that uh, do development aren't quite as practiced in front of the camera as others, so it's up to you if you want to have fun. Um, <clears throat> I think today our goal is to make sure you get a good brief on the 8400, both the hardware and the software. Uh, the 8400 for us represents the top end of our portfolio. It's a carrier class switch router. Um, I think that if you look at, you know, as you'll learn through the day, if you look at the hardware and software design, it has more in common with a core internet router than you would, than you would normally um, associate with an enterprise switch. That's no mistake. Um, this thing will go into the core of big networks and carry the, uh, the responsibility um, that warrants its design. All right. Hi, my name is Michael Dickman. I'm the uh, Vice President of Product Line Management here at Aruba for our switching group. And I really wanted to frame the day about talking with why are we here, right? So it's important to get into all the bits and bytes, which we'll do, but wanted to say, why did we decide to attack the campus core? Uh, and what do we think is needed there? So I'll go through a little bit around, uh, around some of the, the context. So starting with a lot of these trends that we hear about all the time, mobile cloud, IoT, and just frankly data explosion, these things are affecting all areas of IT. And so what we've seen is, you know, certainly at Aruba, especially mobile cloud, and then moving into IoT and some of this data explosion, there's a need for change across the board. As Aruba, we've definitely tackled this at the access layer. So what's different from a user perspective? And in general at Aruba, we look at how is that user experience up rather than kind of network topology down and what's the right way to architect that. But you look at some of these changes, you have different types of applications, you have different types of traffic flows, right? You have now, uh, mobile users, you know, on mobile devices going out to the internet um, just as often, if not more so, than you have desktops going out in a client server model to a data center. And the question is, what's changed and what's different there? And so we see these traffic flows. So how do I think about prioritization? How do I think about segmentation? How do I manage that traffic engineering? And what are the problems I face? And what we see is that, you know, frankly, it's different than it used to be. And so we wanted to talk about what does that mean, uh, even for the core of the network, which is one of the places that's been the last to change, right? The core of the network absolutely can't go down mission critical. And so on the other hand, that would, on the other hand you know, do we need to change that for the modern world? From an IoT perspective, you know, huge growth in connections and different types of connections. There's different protocols, again, different traffic patterns, and also a different level of security exposure that's coming with IoT. And so again, a question of can the core play a role in helping solve some of those issues? Uh, today, frankly, it doesn't. It doesn't typically play a role. And can we do a better job of bringing that in? And then finally, just on the traditional data sources, the logical one here, the obvious one, is data explosion. There's more bandwidth. We need more performance. You know, got it. We'll deliver that. But there's also the question of what else is going on in the environment? What other pieces of software could benefit from knowing what's running through the entire network? What other pieces of software can contribute information, calling actions, or learning behavior from the network? And so when we think about data integration, we'll talk later around you know, user and entity behavior analytics potentially as a future, or just traditional troubleshooting. Can we benefit more by having software talk to each other in a modern way versus some of the legacy approaches? And so a lot of these changes that have affected all areas of IT, we see the core needs to change as well. And so today we're going to walk over a few of these bits uh, in more detail. So starting with the software architecture, the hardware, of course, and then the software architecture and what we call a network analytics engine, we want to walk through what's different in this before versus after world. So one is just pure network resilience. So traditionally in the core of the network, you have uh, closed systems, right? Hard-coded co hard uh, configurations. And it's really hard to test those. Right? So we talk to customers uh, and we ask them, how do you plan and execute your configuration of your campus core switch? And the answer is, you know, we're really smart. We sit down and we think about the right way to do it, kind of draw it out on paper, maybe argue about it, debate, and then we config it. And we, uh, we hope that it works. And then we test it and iterate it. And that's OK, kind of backwards looking. 
What we think in the future is, how can I do a better job of testing a config in a virtualized environment first? How can I think about integration via APIs from the beginning? How can I manage rollback in a different way? So it's not snapping um, uh, snapshots of specific CLI configs per se, but how do I approach rollback uh, in a different, uh, a different way? So reducing downtime, reducing risk of uh, poor performance. A second one is around insights. Um, so you know the first bit right gets us stability, but now how can we go further? And today the insights are are difficult, right? So if you want to have integrations with other bits of software, it tends to be very manual. And so you would say, look, here's the data that I want. I'm going to plan this out very carefully. Maybe do a manual export. You know there could be all kinds of troubleshooting tools. I could have expensive third-party tools that are you know getting data. Uh, but the way that that works tends to be uh, latency, you know, from a user perspective, really, is what we mean here. Right? And so you have to have a human go and decide what to look at, when to look at it, where to pull it, where to send it. And that can be a difficult and challenging thing to be really ahead of, ahead of some of the problems. And so what we'll talk about today, and this is one of the things personally I'm most excited about, is what we're calling here rules-based live streaming of data. And what we mean here is before the problem has fully realized, and before the human gets to start troubleshooting, we're already, uh, as the network, contributing to that troubleshooting and visibility problem. And so even before you get there, you can say, look, I've seen this before, and I've set up rules around what I want to monitor, and I've set up rules around what diagnostic actions I want to take, and the network will start taking those obvious actions automatically. So when the human arrives, you can start with machine-aided troubleshooting. Well, it just feels like visibility fabric to me. Typically, you just send a whole copy off to your visibility fabric box and peel that off and send it off to a tool. It sounds like you're trying to roll all that functionality into one box. So the short answer would be yes uh, to that. I think one of the challenges is, you know, in terms of today, do we want to mirror everything we're doing to some other service that has lots of expensive computing power and then have that, you know, chunk through that and try to do some analytics, and so if you want to call that a visibility fabric. And what, what we've seen from talking to our customers is it would make more sense, uh, you know, if you think about the 80-20 rule, it would make more sense to have the basics and most obvious diagnostics just happen automatically embedded in the network. And so there will always be a need for advanced tools, but, um, and I think we'll do an example on this in detail later, specifically on voice congestion. If you have voice congestion, there's a certain set of things people always check. We found out even that depends by customer. But many customers will say, did I screw up my config and do I have the wrong traffic in the voice queue? Uh, what about other things like CPU and memory utilization? Who are my top talkers? There are things that are always checked. Can the network just automatically check those? Rather than mirroring everything to an external service or waiting for manual troubleshooting or whatever else is the option. So really bring that more directly into the flow in an automated way. And again, there's a tool set here that's doing that. Those, those fundamental analytics, mm -hmm. those things that you want to check. Absolutely. That wants to check Absolutely. Again. Yeah, yeah. That's a great point. The third one here would be the troubleshooting, right? So the first on the insights is why is whatever happening, why is that happening? Uh, and that's that rules-based streaming. But can I do even better on the troubleshooting? And so here today, a lot of the customers, frankly, don't use, I guess what you call a visibility fab fabric. A lot of the customers we talk to are still using CLI. So they say, okay, maybe this is the problem. And then they'll check some logs, they'll check some QoS, Q detailed, you know, they'll check what they check. And it's a little bit of this needle in a haystack. Like, is this the problem? I'll do a CLI and look. No, that wasn't the problem. Is this the problem? And then they'll look and start going through manually. Um, using a visibility framework, we still find ourselves having to run show commands and having to go and do that because yes. when everything works, mm -hmm. it's fine. But when things don't work, that's when we need to get our hands dirty. That's exactly right. And what we see is the way those hands are getting dirty today is actually still manual CLI, you know, because that gives us comfort, because then we know exactly what's happening. Well, it's because it's the only way we can do it. And it's the only way we can do it. Exactly. And so what we'll talk about today is more of a policy-based active monitoring, right? So if we can see what's happening, right, so the network, hopefully the network doesn't go down, right? When we have issues and we get those insights, can we start to do smart things? like? Can I automatically correlate what's happening to a recent event? Uh, and the most common one that's come up in our conversations is config change. All right, so if I change the config, can I see how that might affect what's been going on from an insights perspective and troubleshooting perspective? Can I take the most obvious remediation uh, bits and make those super easy, either automated or uh, very easy for a human to trigger those automatically? And so really providing a better tool set 
that is uh, programmable uh, and embedded in the network. And then lastly, you know, we're not going to be able to solve everything within, you know, within a switch, right? So we'll talk about how great the hardware is and how great the software is, but there are other things you'll need other tools for. But to give the right data at the right time to those tools, we see is very valuable. And so um, in our own portfolio, right, from a user entity behavioral analytics perspective, just to give one example, it's important to send the right kind of data, not literally all data. And so how can I make it as easy as possible to share what's happening from, you know, right now, real time, what's happening from a historical perspective, how can I share that data in and out? And something you'll hear about in the software architecture is 100% REST API uh, coverage in the entire system. And so this gives us huge flexibility. And as other bits of software in the ecosystem become more sophisticated, they know what they need. And we're making it very easy for them to call into us to extract that. And so this is really where we see the core needs to change um, in this world of mobile cloud IoT data explosion is the network resilience just has to be even better than it's been, less manual. The insights have to be less manual, troubleshooting less manual, analytics and visibility less manual. And so a big theme throughout the day will be what can the network do better in terms of the way it was actually built. Not just an after the fact framework to you know, go into a legacy architecture, but how could you build an architecture better from the ground up to solve those problems. And that's really the problem statement um, that we tasked ourselves with. I did want to connect a little bit to uh, Aruba generally. So one of the things that we try to do with, with all of our products are, the, are these four bits that you see here. So the first, and I talked about this a lot already, this mobile cloud IoT perspective. And so when we're testing uh, our thought process with use cases, you know, we always think about mobility, we think about cloud services uh, in terms of traffic flows, we think about IoT devices being different and, and frankly harder from an authentication perspective or profiling perspective, and always testing our, our thought process with that lens. The second one is software-defined API first. Uh, and so we've really approached that. And I don't want to get into the whole, you know, what does SDN mean conversation? But the idea is it should be programmable. We should start with well-structured uh, elements in the way we do the architecture. It should be easy to understand, uh, you know, for sophisticated programmers, for sophisticated network engineers, and for other pieces of software, and very easy in and out. The third one is open and multi-vendor. So I want to make sure I, I do hit that very clearly. That's something that uh, both Aruba and HP historically have always uh, committed to. And so the protocols that we use, uh, the, the structure that we have, and the availability to other systems will always be open. And we'll always engage very happily with the multi-vendor scenario. That's something that we believe is very important for our customer first, customer last culture. And then finally, security driven. I think we'll get into more detail here in the software uh, architecture. And so this has two, two places that it'll affect the core. One is, can I trust the infrastructure itself? And the second is, how does the infrastructure help with security? Right? And so I want to be a sensor and enforcer, and I also want to be a trusted piece of that architecture. And so we really build that in. I think Aruba for a long time uh, made its mark as secure mobility, not just mobility. And we really want to think about secure networking, not just networking. All right, so getting a little bit more into, all right, so what about a core switch? There are some things that are absolutely required, and we will deliver these. Uh, we'll consider these table stakes. Rich protocol support, a good HA model, some virtualization in the way you manage uh, for both simplicity as well as resiliency. Obviously, the you know, sizing, speeds and feeds, the performance, et cetera, we have to have that. And so you'll hear we're obviously in the multi-terabits, got very high performance line cards, a lot of future proofing there, a great hardware model around HA. Uh, also, the basics around software. So all of that has to be there for any uh, core switch in today's world and then the basics of a security or, uh, infrastructure around that. And that's important, and we're going to deliver that. But what made us decide that this was the right time for Ruby to get in the campus core was solving some of those problems I talked about earlier. Right? So you think about some of the emerging requirements, automation, the analytics of visibility, that network assurance. Programmability is that big one that's both intimidating and exciting, and we'll talk about that a lot more today. And then the seamless to service deployment. Right? So one of our customers, for example, said, Look, our core switches today actually do have enough bandwidth. We're not facing a bandwidth problem. But when we tried to roll out a new uh, video conferencing service globally, it failed. Uh, we had to manually configure everything separately and whatever, I don't remember how many dozens of locations they had. They had no way to automatically plumb the infrastructure. They had a very difficult time troubleshooting problems as they came up. 
And interestingly, a lot of those were finally identified through that needle in the haystack CLI command um, experience in the core. And so they said this would, this would really kind of address that. And so it's these emerging requirements on top of those table stakes uh, that we really want to go after. And so we'll spend time on that today. <coughs> and then finally, you think about Aruba overall. Aruba very strong in the access layer, right? So access, uh, wireless access, wired access. Um, you know, we even have out an outdoor component. We have controllers, et cetera. We've got all that in the access layer and to enable but really a ton of investment in software, and you'll hear uh, about that as well now from the core, from network controls, network management, to policy, but also new areas like this behavioral analytics, uh, looking at the cloud and location services. And so when we think about the core fitting into Aruba, how do we make that as much as possible, um, provide additional value to those software assets and leverage those software assets? And so that again is something that when we take this approach of programmability and automation, it actually helps us make those integrations easier. And so really looking at this as the natural extension of an Aruba architecture overall. So specifically today, we're going to talk through three things. A box, an OS, and an analytics engine. So the Aruba 8400, which I think we will actually see later, uh, is that hardware switch, and then Mike uh, Fry in a moment is going to go through a lot of the details. We're really proud of the way this thing's come together. Uh, Mike's going to go into a lot of details of the way it's built, but really a very um, high quality hardware device. It's obviously a chassis switch, gives you a lot of flexibility, dual management modules, line card options, and so on, and you'll hear all about that. Aruba OS CX is the Aruba OS version that we're using, uh, purpose built for the campus core. And this is not um, it is not a traditional architecture in the sense of a lot of uh, processes which are all self-contained, kind of spaghetti code, and then talk to each other. So you'll hear a different and better way that that was built. Now we've leveraged a lot of our heritage, uh, especially on the switching side, obviously, in the way that we've constructed that from a protocol stack perspective. The infrastructure, though, is different. And the difference and advantages of that infrastructure are what make us uh, able to deliver on that promise I talked around with automation is we actually did have to rethink the architecture itself. And that was a huge effort. Uh, and you'll hear, I think, from Frank uh, in a little bit around how that was done. And then we've gone ahead and taken that capability from the OS, and we've built in ourselves what we call this network analytics engine. And that is directly leveraging the OS capabilities and taking it to the next level and saying, how can we make it as easy as possible to interact? And so when we say network analytics engine, that is a framework, um, you know, even a UI and a, a Python scripting uh, availability. And so you can go in and say, look, when we say rules-based live streaming of data, can you show me how hard or easy is that? And can you show me why I would use that? And we've built a framework already to do that. So you don't have to start from scratch and program. You can actually have this engine available to you already. And that's been another uh, big area of investment. And so those are the really the three pieces. So sometimes we say Aruba 8400. From our perspective, it's really the three of these together that makes that difference. And so just to close a bit, you know, robust platform, right? That's the basis. But we're really trying to think about a lot more in terms of capability. So this microservices delivery and integration, uh, sometimes Tom, who, who introduced us a moment ago, will say, this is actually like a piece of cloud software. It's a modern piece of software. It's not a hardware platform that everything else needs to build off of. It's a modern piece of software that has the right integration, and even within its architecture, a microservices approach. And that's a different and better way to do things. Automation based on policy, talked about that. The insights and visibility, you'll hear a lot about not just visibility of what's happening right now, but visibility around what has been happening even before you arrive to the console to start looking at it. So that concept of history um, or visibility fabric, Ethan, as you talked about, with memory, that that's actually built in. The network assurance, you know, not just from a hardware perspective, but software, and how we can assure on that from the beginning to the end. Right, so when I'm planning the config, testing the config, rolling it out, doing rollback, doing troubleshooting, at each step providing more and better software tools. And then finally as a sensor, um, one of the things again that customers have told us is it would be really nice to have total visibility of the network. Right? Everything's going out to cloud, everything's going to the internet, we still have things going to the data center, but really the core of the network sees everything. And so how can we leverage that more than, more than is being done today as a sensor to provide that total intelligence? 
And so that's another piece. So it's all of these together uh, that we want to drive. And I just wanted to close a little bit. Um, I don't know if uh, you know, some of you have been around Aruba a little bit. We have what we call customer first, customer last culture. And this is really important to all of us. You know, obviously, this means we listen to the customers and we try to do um, you know, feature requests and be responsive. But it also means we think about that customer at every step. So what's that customer's need? How do we put them first in our development process? But also, after the fact, as they've already rolled out the capabilities, how do we make sure we still keep that customer in mind? Not just service and support, but from an ongoing development perspective. And so uh, you know, one of the customers that's already deployed the Aruba 8400, uh, Tomball School District, this is in Texas, you know, they see a lot of benefits here. And you'll notice what they talk about is that automation and programmability is letting them do more with less. I mean, you can imagine a school district, they don't have an unlimited IT budget, they don't have you know, a ton of people. And so doing more with less matters. Monitoring and analytics, that reliability, and really it came down to this reducing of manual touches. So you have a lot of smart network engineers out there who know how to solve these problems, but frankly it's just taking too long. And we think the reason for that is not enough tools and not the right set of tools. And so we're real happy to, uh, you know, to be part of that and extend what we've been doing on the access layer into the core. So I've actually got a quick question for you on the, uh, Shoot. the description of the product literature. You described it as carrier class. I come from a carrier background, so I'm just curious, within the context of Aruba, what does carrier class mean as it relates to the 8400? What are the, the attributes that define sure. it as carrier class? So what, what we mean most directly is the hardware quality and redundancy, mm -hmm. and also the software that sits behind that. And so you have multiple levels of redundancy. I think when Mike comes on, he'll go into some details there. But the short answer would be that uh, you, can ha you have a lot of redundancy built in every layer. And it's done in a way that is um, more robust than some of the older approaches um, you know, into, into the campus. And so that's what we mean by, by carrier class, would just be that level of redundancy resiliency, both in hardware and software. And so then Mike can go into the details of, of some of those bits. Okay, thanks. Yeah. The, the reason we think that's important to customers in the enterprise is um, just that mission criticality of the network. I mean, it's been high for a long time, but we really want to emphasize that we've paid a lot of attention to that table stakes piece around resiliency and reliability. I mean, it cannot go down. And so that's why we have invested the time um, and cost to make that happen.